11 medals for the English-speaking Caribbean for the CARICOM region with two days to go at the World Athletics Championships in Budapest, Hungary. Nine for Jamaica, three gold, three silver and three bronze medals. One for the British Virgin Islands, Kyron McMaster, 400 meter hurdles, silver and one for Barbados, Shade Williams, 400 meter bronze. As we look back at the women's triple jump from day number seven, the event won by Yudemar Rojas, her fourth world title. I'm so enthralled by this Yudemar Rojas woman. She won her first world title, beating Katerina Barguin in 2017 in what I think is the greatest triple jump final I have seen because of the head-to-head -head, um, matchup in that final. But this one was great as well. Um, Beck Romanchuk, 15 meters to finish in second. Hernandez of Cuba, 14.96 to finish in third. Shanika Ricketts, 14.92, the Jamaican a season's best in fourth. Tia Lafon, the a Dominican national record, 14.90 to finish in fifth. Kimberly Williams of Jamaica in her ninth consecutive global championship final, finishing in seventh position at 14.38. That 34-year-old has been in every global final since 2013. That is quite a special feat, and she makes the top eight for the eighth of those nine times. Leighton Levy, I remember in the year 2004, I can never forget it, Lance remembers it as well because he was in Athens, Greece. Trisha K. Smith jumping 15.05 meters and finishing outside the medals in the triple jump. And I just could not believe it. I have not seen anything like that until today. Yeah, it was incredible. When you consider Cherry Karikis opened up with 1480, 1484, mm -hmm. and then by the, by the time the next two jumps were completed, she had dropped a third. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and then Ciela Fon does, you know, I've I, I, I met her this year, and I think she's a remarkable human being. She jumps, she jumps 1460 in the, in, the, in the qualifying round. She comes out and she pops 1490 to temporarily move ahead of Shanika Ricketts. And they were still out of the medals. Mm -hmm. You know, it, this competition was ridiculous. And, and by the way, at that time, Yulimar Rojas was and in eighth position. Yeah. She wasn't even close. Yeah. But I knew she had it in her. She, look, all Yulimar Rojas needs is one good jump. Yes. Right? That's how good she is. And look, I remember that she barely got into the top eight because she and Kenta uh, RG were locked in terms of distance. And it was a count back why she got into the top eight. Mm -hmm. And then she comes out and pops, what, 1508 and says, okay, rest on sit down and <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just... But was she genuinely troubled or nervous, though? Because looking at how the event developed, I was confident that she would find the jump. But I guess in the moment, she may have had some doubts, did she? Actually, I think she had some rhythm problems early on, and I think... Yes. I think she was probably worried after the third jump when she realized it wasn't coming together. Yes. But having got into the last eight, mm -hmm. she realized that she had an opportunity to offer three more jumps. And she knew, because when you, when you win as often, this woman hasn't lost in four years. Yes. So when you, when you have that kind of winning record, winning is a habit, you find ways to pull off a victory. And all she needed was an extra jump. And boom, 15.08, and, and it was over. Because you, when you have that kind of belief, you always know that regardless of the struggles that you have, all you need is one good jump. And that's exactly what she did. And, you know, everybody else has to settle for the silver and bronze and, and scratching their head wondering how the hell they didn't end up on the podium when you're jumping season's best. When you look at that chart, you know, the graphic, you know, I think that from fourth to seventh, or from third to seventh, all were season's best. And nobody was close to a medal there. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Let's talk about Tia Lafondo finished in fifth position, a national record. Her national record before tonight, 14.62. She set that in qualifying. An inspired performance that unfortunately came on a night when everybody was inspired. Yeah. Look, I spoke to her earlier this year. And what she said to me that she was stronger this year. She was faster this year. She's working on her, on her different phases. And she expected to do well at the World Championships. When she was at the race of the Grand Prix, I also had a chat with her. And she had a couple of meets after the National Championships where she was working on different things, preparing for these championships. Everything seemed to have come together here. Yes. <laughs> but as you mentioned before, it just came at the wrong time. I saw her after she hit the 14, 1490. And 
when she saw where she was on the board still, yes. she just shook her head because <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. You know, she jumped like she, a massive... When she jumped the 1490, that moved her into third, third position. Temporary. Yes, but she didn't stay there long. No, the <laughs> very next jump, she was back in fourth. You know, so it, 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 it has to be frustrating when you're putting your best effort out there and it's still not good enough to get on the podium. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons why I feel like there's a, there's a, there's a suggestion a couple of years ago about eliminating certain events from, from track and field competitions. Too. Oh dear, yes. But when you see what happens here, happened here in the triple jump, was there, has there been a more thrilling competition so yes. far at mm -hmm. these championships? I doubt it. Mm -hmm. Because you might not be a, a, a field events fan, but when you look at how competitive this event was, the, all these women brought their A game today. Even um, Miss Williams, who was averaging about 13, 90 all season, yes. brought her season's best, 14, yeah. 3. So you look at everybody brought their A game today. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just unfortunate that some of them had to do without a medal. Mm -hmm. This was intense competition. You could not take your eyes I, off the I, I love the triple jump. I yeah. think the tri yes. triple jump is visually yeah. one of the most aesthetically pleasing yeah. events in track and field. And it's funny, Ricardo and I were talking about Jerome Romain, the Dominican mm -hmm. Um, who had made a mark in triple jump. He was a bronze medalist at the Gothenburg World Championship in 1995 and a silver medalist, I think, at the Panam Games in, in Mar del Plata, Argentina. So um, a second triple jumper from Dominica is, is world level and challenging for medals. Huge disappointment for Thea Lafon La that be. she wasn't able to get a medal today based on how well she jumped. Yeah, I mean, she gave it, she gave it everything today. And in most years, that would have, she would have been on the podium. That's right. In most years, she would have been on the podium. Because I, you know, when you look back at the, 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 the history of the, the women's triple jump since this world championship started in, in, in 1983, 1470, 1471, 1475, puts you in the top four in the world or on, on the podium. Once you get to 1480, yeah. you, you yeah. generally yeah. medal. Yeah. You're, you're generally in the medals once you get and to 1480. And you pop 1490 and um, you're, you're wondering, you know, yeah, who, the, where in God's name did everybody come from? <laughs> this was a remarkable standard. The, the sprint relays, the finals are coming up on Saturday late in Levy. Let's deal with the men first of all. Trinidad and Tobago out, not getting into the final. Jamaica into the final though. Uh, the Jamaicans ran Akeem Blake to obtain Bleak Seville to Raheem Ford to Rohan Watson, Watson, who ran an absolute scorcher and anchor, by the way. Um, there are some there is controversy in the Jamaica camp about the relays. By the way, we're gonna be discussing those sometime next week. We, we give it some time to settle down. But for now, we're talking about what's happening on the track, Leighton. What did you see? The fastest time the Jamaicans have run since 2016. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot. 37.69. Is there a medal there for Jamaica in the men's 4 there, by 100? There could be, and, um, but they have to be better than they were in the heats. Mm. Um, there are a couple of things that I noticed in the heats. The button chains were safe. Yes. I think they probably have to take a little bit greater risk and get that exchange near the end of the box. Just to ensure that they get that stick not to slow down enough. Second thing, Oblique Civil visibly slowed down on the back stretch to adjust the stick in his hand. That, I think, cost him a few fractions. Um, but the, the third leg and, of course, the ankle leg were okay. And I thought the 37.67 suggests that they could probably get 37.5 out of this team if they execute better in the, in the, in the finals. Will that guarantee them gold medal? a gold medal? No. Or I think a medal? It, actually, it should guarantee them a medal. Mm, you uh, sure? I'm, look, Italy is going to be hard to beat. They're Japan are dangerous. Yeah. Yes. USA are favourites. The USA should win this, hands down, because yes. no one else comes into this team and they're suddenly... Can't, can't count out South Africa because they have some quality there as yeah, well. Yeah, but I just don't think they're fast enough. Okay. Uh, so I think when you look at the times going in here, South Africa 37-72, but I think of, of, the, of the, 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 the Jamaican team, I think, has the ability to run a little bit faster than they did in the, in the, semif in the heats. Yeah. And if they get the stick changes right and they... Oblique will not slow down, and I think a little bit of rust may have been a factor in Akeem Blake because he hasn't really competed since the national championships. Yes. So that, this race would have probably gotten him a little bit sharper. If he comes out and runs a bit, because I think it was 10.46, I think it was, on the opening leg, I think he's, he's capable of running faster because okay. Coleman, I think, ran 10.41 on the opening leg. Um, so I think if Akeem Blake can get his time down, that's a little bit. Oblique Seville runs what we know he's capable of. 
Ryan Ford, I think, has to be a little bit sharper on the curve. And, of course, Ron Watson, if he replicates as anchor leg, I think will be in with the middle. Do you think it helps the team that they're running the same team in the final that mm. they ran in the heats? No changes. No changes. Familiarity, the familiarity helps. Mm. And because these are, in real terms, the four fastest Jamaicans available, I don't think there's a change that could make this team better. I don't see it. Yes. Um, who do you bring in? Um, not Goldson, not... Even Hudson is Hudson. not. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't see anybody who can come. This in is the this team. team. This yeah. is the quartet. Yeah. I don't see anybody who comes in and makes this team better. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to just improve on what happened in the heats, which I don't think the improvements are going to be, have to be significant. And I think the Jamaican team is capable of 37-5. 37-5 gets them a medal. Yeah, I, I agree with that. How about the women? Can the women beat the USA? Um, I think so. But we have to set up right, and I think you and I had a conversation. It's of course about who runs where. Um, you just always give away our off. The secrets, <laughs> like. No, but it's, it's it's instructive in that we have divergent views on, on where who should run where. In those are off your views, Leighton. How do you know I have those views on air? <laughs> wait, wait, you should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think based on what we saw in the heat today, 41-7, it's a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. But if Gabby Thomas and, and, um, and Shaka Char Richardson comes into the US Which they are likely to. Yeah, the US team would be a lot faster. And they, are, they were already faster in the heats. So the team I would put on that track would be Brianna Williams to Sherika Jackson on the back stretch or the anchor mm -hmm. with Elaine Thompson here running the third leg, and of course Shelly coming home. The reason why I would probably put Shelly on the anchor leg mm -hmm. is because if it's close, the only Jamaican woman who can actually take advantage of any opportunity against Shakira Richardson if she anchors is Shelly Jackson, because Shelly is not the Shelly of last year, 10-6 Shelly. Um, Shelly Jackson has the ability to overhaul anybody on that anchor leg, but it all depends on how well they're set up and who they use in that final. I think the team. Right now, for me, is the only addition would be coming in would be Sherika Jackson on that back straight. So you're saying that no Natasha Morrison, who got to the semifinals of the 100, no Shasha Lee Forbes, who ran the third leg today and also got to the semifinals of the 100. You would go with Elaine? Yeah, I would go with Elaine. She ran 9-9 on the back stretch. Elaine is a 200-meter runner. Um, so th there is comfort there with the 200. And you have our third leg. Yeah, if, I would have if you were picking the team. If I was picking the team, which, which you aren't. Which I'm not. Yeah, but <laughs> the reality is that based on what I saw from the from the heats, she looks sharp. Yeah. Um, she looks sharper than she was at the national championships. So I would put her on the third leg, given the speed that I saw her execute along that back stretch, and then have either Shelley or Sharika anchor. I prefer Sharika to anchor. I would prefer to have Shelley on the back stretch because Shelley's pickup is a lot quicker than anybody else on that team. Mm -hmm. And we saw what happened, what was it, at the Olympics in was it 2021 when Shelley destroyed the back stretch. Yes. I, I, I would put there. yeah, I would put Shelly on the back stretch and have her destroy everything over there mm. and then have Sharika take it home. Mm. All right. We've destroyed the time for the show today. <laughs> That's it um, for a track and field segment on the Sports Rank Zone. Jamaica winning gold today on this uh, wonderful Friday in Budapest, Hungary. Sharika Jackson, a championship record, 21.41 to win the 200 meters. A national record for Tia Lafon in the women's triple. Onto the medals in fifth, the Jamaican Shanika Ricketts in fourth. Two days of competition to go, Saturday and Sunday. The relays, a massive part of that. And we'll be back on Monday to recap it all on the Sports Max Zone. Still more to come on today's show, so stay with us.